Hey everybody, it's Benny One, and I'm back at you again with another Superman movie review, and we're moving on to 1983's Superman 3, everybody. And once again, this movie sees Christopher Reeve return to don the cape and play Superman once again, and this is directed again by Richard Lester, everybody, because the Sulkines wanted to keep him on board after all the stuff that happened with Superman 2, and it was very successful still, even after that crazy story of what happened with that movie, boy. Let me tell you what, if you you guys can go watch my review for Superman 2, I, I really dug in and looked up a lot of stuff about these movies, because man, these, these movies that Christopher Reeve was in are very controversial. Like, the stuff that went on behind the scenes in the making of all of his Superman movies is kind of crazy. Like, this one even kind of has a little bit of a crazy backstory. So, I'm going to introduce the cast really quick, and then I'm going to talk about the backstory of this movie, and then we'll talk about the movie a little bit. So, um, so once again, of course, Christopher Reeve returns to play Superman and Clark Kent um and he honestly in my opinion I think he is probably like at his best physical looking physique wise playing this character like I really think that he actually like fully looks like Superman like completely like physically wise and everything in this movie and it sucks because he doesn't get a whole lot of screen time in this movie um, which is something we will talk about. Um, Richard Pryor, everybody, that's right. I love Richard Pryor. Awesome comedian actor from the 70s and 80s. He played Gus Gorman. And the movie, honestly, I would ugh, almost say that Gus Gorman is kind of the main character in this movie in a way. More so than Superman, to tell you the truth. So yeah, Richard Pryor was brought on board to be a funny comedic like just influence on this movie and that 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 just tells you the way the movie went unfortunately um Annette O'Toole everybody plays Lana Lang that is right Martha Kent from Smallville years later got to play Martha Kent she got to play Lana Lang the adult version of Lana Lang in Superman 3 and her and Christopher Reeve have great on-screen chemistry together she was the love interest in this movie because Lois Lane really wasn't in this movie very much. Um, she's in it, though. And then Robert Vaughn replaces Lex Luthor, and he plays Ross Webster. And he's basically a cheaper version of Lex Luthor. He really is. Um, he just is. He's just a cheaper version of Lex Luthor. Um, he was in The Man from U.N.C.L.E., like the old school TV show and stuff, so that's what he was known for. And he's, I don't know, he's an okay villain. He's hes not Lex Luthor, though. And Annie Ross plays Vera, his sister, and she is creepy, man. She is a very, very creepy lady. And Margot Kidder returns to play Lois Lane, everybody. And she is literally in the very beginning of the movie at the Daily Planet. And then we don't see her again until the very end. She goes on a trip um, out of the country. So we don't really get to see her. She doesn't really get any screen time very like at all, really. Uh, Mark um, McClure, who plays Jimmy Olsen, he's in this movie again. And he actually gets a little bit more screen time. He gets to go on a bus trip to Smallville. Because Clark, um, the whole thing with his character in this movie, Clark goes to a... Uh, school reunion in Smallville and that's how you know he ends up meeting back up with Lana and Jimmy's gonna go there and like take pictures with him and everything and there's a cool scene where a uh, chemical plant is on fire and the bus stops that they're on going to Smallville and it's actually a really cool sequence and well shot well done uh the flying mechanics it was all like naturally done they didn't really use a lot of you know special effects back in the day style like it was actually shot all real and it actually looked really good 
the flying stuff looked good in it like the flying stuff looked mostly pretty damn good in this movie still um and then Jackie Cooper returned as Perry White and he was just in those few scenes with the Daily Planet nothing crazy so now let's talk about the backstory with this movie so and we got to go all the way back to the first Superman movie because uh Richard Donner literally was going to make four Superman movies, I found out. When I was reading about this, I was just like blown away by this stuff. That he had plans to make four movies, which they did end up making, but they did not go the way he was going to make them. Because in this third one, Richard Donner was going to introduce Brainiac. And Brainiac was going to be the big bad villain in this third Superman movie. Man, I'm telling you what, but then everything that happened with the first two Superman movies, which if you want to know all about that, watch the review for Superman 2. It's it's a long review. I really dived into it and talked about it. Um, but yeah, he got replaced by Richard Lester and all this stuff, so the story was different, except for they did keep little bits and pieces of things from that script because we do kind of get we get this robotic computer that becomes self-aware basically and kind of takes over and is trying to kill everybody and everything and it, at one point it turns um vera ross webster's sister into a robot <laughs> that's kind of like brainiac in a way but not really and looks horrible like so they kind of kept somewhat of the ideas around um but yeah so that was all scrapped, of course, because we have a different director, different direction, everything. Um, and Christopher Reeve was not going to come back and play Superman. He told him, I'm not going to come back. I really don't want to be a part of this anymore because of what happened with Richard Donner with Superman 1 and 2. It put a bad taste in his mouth. He was never very public about it. Margot Kidder was very public about it. That's why... She actually wasn't in this movie very much because she did not want to really be a part of it because of what happened with her and Richard Donner because they all got to be really good friends with Donner. Like her, he, uh, Gene Hackman, Christopher Reeve, like they all got to be really good friends with him in the making of those first two movies. And so she just really wasn't, didn't want to be a part of the movie either. So yes, Christopher Reeves was like, I'm sorry, guys. And, like, they literally were, like, days away from filming this movie. Like, they were ready to go, and they couldn't convince him to come back. So, wait for this crap. These are the people that they were eyeballing and talked to about replacing him to play Superman. So, envision this shit. Jeff Bridges, that's right, the dude himself, was one of the people. Kurt Russell, uh, John Travolta... Yes, all three of those guys were approached. They all obviously did not do this. And then literally just a couple days before filming started, Tony Danza was cast to play Superman. Literally. Tony Danza was cast like just a couple days before filming was supposed to start and everything. And thank God, Richard Lester was just like, no way. He looked at the Sulkines and everything and he was like, you guys can't be serious, right? And so he got a hold of freaking Reeve, Christopher, and he just, he begged him to come back. Like, he's like, dude, come on, please come back. They're casting Tony Danza for Christ's sakes. So he did come back, but he had to have more creative power in the script and everything. And I'm sure he got a little more cha-ching, cha-ching to come back. So he came back. To be Superman once again. And like I said, I think he physically, like physique wise, like I think he looks the best that he has looked in any of the four movies that he was in, in this movie. So, so yes, the movie got made. Um, it did not do nearly as well as the previous two movies, unfortunately, because this movie's corky. It's kind of like a spin off Superman story. Because it doesn't involve any of his main villains or anything like that. We just get a bunch of these side characters that are replacing, like, Miss Tessmacher and Lex Luthor. And it, they're just replacing characters that we've already seen. And that's why Hugh... So, um, Gene Hackman... I almost keep saying Hugh Jackman. <laughs> but Gene Hackman 
there's rumors around that he did not want to be a part of this movie because of what happened with Richard Donner. But he also mainly said he didn't want to have Lex Luthor in the third Superman movie or anymore because he's like, that's not Superman's only villain. So he just really didn't want to be in the movie. He's like, he has more villains. So, so yes, they, he, that's why Gene Hackman was not in this movie and Lex Luthor was not in this movie. But when the movie opens, you get right away, you get what kind of movie this is going to be and the, the way that the movie is, the theme, the funniness, the silliness of it. Like, because you get that Superman stuff where the words are kind of swooshing and everything in the title, but it's the backdrop of that instead of it being space is this funny, corky scene that's going on in Metropolis where accidents are happening and people are falling and these little penguin things are going all over the place. Guy's falling in a manhole and dude hits a fire hydrant and his car starts filling up with water, but he can't roll the window down for some reason or he can't open the door even though his car just hit a fire hydrant and he's stuck in there. So then, of course, Clark has to change into Superman and go save him. <laughs> it's just, and literally the credits are like doing the same exact thing that they were in the second and the first Superman movie, but this is all in the backdrop of this going on. And there's this weird music playing like throughout also with the Superman theme. Like it, very odd. Like it just set the tone for the movie that this is obviously going to be very silly and way more comedic than the other two Superman movies, like, by far. And it is. It's quirky. It's silly. The villains are... The whole scheme is, is to have this computer because Russ... They find out... Russ Gorm, or Gus War, uh, Gorman literally has no job. And then he gets a job. And then he scams his boss out of money. Like, a shit ton of money. And then when his boss, Webster, finds out, hires him to um, do something with computers and shit and affect the weather with this satellite so that it takes out all the coffee beans in Colombia and stuff like this so he can own all the rights to the coffee beans. And it, it involves the weather a lot, like, kind of like the weather wizard from one of the Flash villains. It's very interesting stuff. Very interesting shit. <laughs> Uh, because the the Sulkines wanted to kind of go into that whole Star Wars, Star Trek, sci-fi type stuff. I think they went a little bit too far. Because if they really wanted to do this, they should have brought Brainiac in like Richard Donner wanted to. <laughs> like, they, re they really should have. The movie is silly. Um, we don't get a lot of Superman in the movie. Even though there is this one scene in the movie where Superman gets this... The, okay, so Gus... And Webster and his sister have this plan. They're going to make kryptonite. They're going to make kryptonite because this is all, this movie's computers, man. Like computer technology was taken off and they're like computers. So they make this piece of kryptonite, but there's a part of it, an element that's unknown. So Gus is looking at a pack of cigarettes and he's like tar. Cause he's like, I don't know what the hell unknown is. So he puts tar in there. And he gives it to Superman in Smallville when they're having a celebration thing for him, giving him a key to the city. And it doesn't do anything to him like Kryptonite would, but as the movie goes on a little bit, he starts to turn dark and evil. His Superman costume gets all dirty and dark and nasty looking. His beard starts getting stubbly. And he, we get evil Superman. Like, Christopher Reeve does a great job playing an evil Superman. And I feel like they should have done more with that in this movie. Like, with the story they were telling. Because it was very brief in the movie. And we get a fight scene between the good Superman as Clark Kent. And this evil version of Superman in this junkyard. And it was short, but it was really cool, actually. And... I really think they should have focused more on that as in this movie as a whole. Because it's basically like Red Kryptonite in Smallville. It just makes him evil. He loses all inhibitions. Like, in everything. It just, it was a really cool part in the movie. But overall, the movie is pretty silly. The script is not the best in the world. Um, some of the effects don't, they're not as good as the first and second movie. Uh, but Christopher Reeve is still amazing as this character in this movie. 
Um, he's got that flying thing down too, man. Like when they have him up on the wires and he's flying the poses and everything, I really think that's partially why it looks so good still is because he just had that down. Like he mastered that shit. Um, but overall, it's a pretty weak Superman movie to tell you, tell you guys the truth. It really is. So I'm going to give Superman 3 a 6 out of 10, everybody. So I hope you guys enjoyed that review. Thank you for watching. And ah. Be catching you on the tube laters because I have spoken. <laughs>